so how's it going everyone? Um, so today I was going to cover um, mostly one R package called Zell Converter, but um, we'll be covering like related packages. And the idea here is like being able to um, move certain data between R and Python. Uh, and maybe this is like a specific use case for um, uh, specifically what we'll, we'll be doing is like working with spatial data, but um, hopefully there's like, even though it's sort of like a niche use case, I think there's will be stuff that everyone can get out of this. Um, and specifically we'll be like uh, working on like converting summarized experiment type objects in R um, to AND data in Python. So um, yeah, I'll mostly focus on the Zell converter package, but um, and in case you wanted to follow along, it probably isn't necessary, but if you, in case you find it helpful, like I made a little repo um, it's on this link and I, tried, I shared it. Um, you can go ahead and like clone that repo and it has all the materials for this. Um, yeah, um, from the chat, I see, yeah, this is, um, Zelda is actually designed for single cell data, uh, but in my use case, I've, than doing spatial. So it's actually easier if you want to <laughs> use single cell. Um, yeah. Um, so just as like, like an overview in like past RSS clubs, I think we've talked about like summarized experiment type objects a good amount. But to sort of recap, it's like, um, it's a format for storing basically like matrix like data. So in this assays matrix, um, you'll have something like genes as the rows and uh, uh, either like samples or cells, um, some sort of observation as the columns. Um, and then each of the values is like the counts typically. Um, and you can have multiple assays. So you can have like raw counts, you can have log counts and uh, whatever you want stored there. Um, in the rows, you'll have basically annotation for for whatever the rows are. So you, typically that's like information about each of your genes. Um, similarly, you'll have annotations for the columns in the call data. Um, so that's information about your samples. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, in, in terms of like Python, there's the um, and data class is like really similar to summarized experiments. Um, and yeah, you still have like your matrix like data you have information about your rows and columns, as well as some unstructured. Um, uh, unstructured information that's like metadata about the experiment or whatever. Um, so for this, like what we'll be doing today is like, as I mentioned, we'll be focusing on Excel converter, this R package. So we're, we're gonna actually take a spatial experiment, which is based on summarized experiment. Um, and yeah, it also applies for single cell experiment. Um, we'll be taking one of those objects in R and we'll convert it to an AND data in Python. And specifically, we'll try to make sure that it's like formatted properly for some popular Python packages, like namely uh, ScanPy and SquidPy, uh, but I think others as well. Uh, these are just two that I really used. Um, so like the first step is that since we're, Zell Converter is actually designed for single cell experiment objects, um, and so right now I don't know of a good way that's like a really clean way to just convert everything perfectly. So we'll have to do some manual work, um, specifically like there are some slots in the spatial experiment that Zell Converter doesn't know how to convert. Um, one of those is called spatial chords, just the coordinates of the spots for, um, for example, like a busy type experiment. Um, and once we do that, once we convert it, um, or once we prepare it for conversion, we actually do the conversion and um, our result is a um, file on disk um, in, in H5AD format. So that's, um, once we write that, then we can load it in as an AND data and we can do that in Python. Um, so we have the object Python, then um, there's a couple more manual steps. I, again, I don't really know the, the, a super clean way to do this. So that's why there's some manual work. Um, but in terms of like the spatial experiment object, one of the things there is um, it also has like image data for some like fluorescence images, for example. Um, 
in image metadata. So we'll have to like import that into the object manually, unfortunately. Um, and then make sure everything's formatted for some packages that we'll use. Um, so actually we can jump in now to the, the code. Um, so yeah, I mentioned that there's like a Git repo that I have like all the materials here. So let me just clone that. Um, okay, so go into this directory. Um, specifically, why did I do that? I meant the uh, CD. Um, so let's jump in here. Um, yeah, there's actually a few scripts here. Maybe it's probably more helpful to show in uh, CyberDog. Um, let me reload this. I might have to make this a little bigger. It's probably small because actually I don't know how to zoom in for whatever. Um, so I, I should mention that um, I forgot to mention this, and it's kind of important. So like if you're following along, um, this is sort of designed for like um, to do at JHPC. Um, the data is public, but like sort of I prepared this uh, directory. Like the code in here sort of assumes that you're working at JHPCE. Um, so like the first step we'll do is um, if I can organize this better. Um, let's see if this is can fit cleanly on this on the screen. For now, we'll just do this. Yeah, I like to use a different text editor for uh, most of my app, like. I'll use Sublime for everything other than R, but anyways, it's kind of off topic. Um, first thing is there's some data, even though all the data is public, like um, there's some files that at JHPCE um, that we'll use later. Um, so basically it's like the image related data. So um, we have like a high resolution image related to the spatial experiment and some image metadata. Um, but yeah, this is just like you're following along. Um, I'm just going to run this code interactively. So it like links the files that we will need later. Um, it's kind of a small thing, but um, next let's jump into the, the actual R code. Um, uh, actually, let's make this a little bigger. Just in this little. Um, so yeah, if you're on JHPCE, um, I would load the, I've been using the Conda R develop module for my R. Um, so I'm just going to open up R interactively. Um, yeah, so some packages we'll use, um, in terms of the data, we'll be using spatial LIBD data. So that's the reason we load this package. Of course, cell converter for conversion, reticulate all, um, is actually what Zell Converter sort of, um, uh, I guess I'll go into this later in the presentation. I don't want to dive too deep, but um, we talked about the here package for like convenient uh, handling of like paths. Um, Basilisk will use, um, and Basilisk sort of like is able to execute code in a um, environment like a conda environment, for example. So we'll best like to make sure that we have. Um, we'll be running some Python code from R in order for like um, computer to know how to do that. Like you have to have like a conda environment Python stuff set up. But I'll describe that a little bit more detail. Um, anyways, I should probably load these packages. So just mentioning with it. Um, and yeah, we have a path to write the, um, once we convert the object, we want to have a path to write on disk. Sorry, I thought I got like, disconnected for a second. That's weird. Um, 
Um, anyways, yeah, we'll be actually doing it. So the example data has 12 different samples and just for like speed, we'll be subsetting to just one of them. Um, and let me describe like the sort of this function here is what does like the bulk of the conversion. Um, so I'll go into each step. Um, the invisible is not important. It's just like says like don't print stuff when you return. Um, Basilisk run is a, I sort of mentioned like it's a function for running um, code inside like a particular Conda environment, essentially from R, um, which we'll be we'll be using that to make sure we have all the Python dependencies set up. Since we're actually going to be running Python within R, it's kind of confusing, but that's what helps us do that. Um, so you provide like a function to run. You, you provide it this m variable, which is like um, a conda environment. In this case, the Zill converter package provides a built-in conda environment that has like the dependencies you should need to like do stuff with and data and the conversion and all that. So I'm just using that from the, from the package, but it's also possible to supply your own conda environment. I haven't tried that, so I don't know. I want to be able to describe exactly how to do that, but. Um, and here you provided like, since I wrote this function, um, you provided like a single cell experiment or even similar, we're actually gonna be providing a spatial experiment, um, but anything that is like, that's similar enough basically will work and then the path to write it to. Um, as for what this function is actually doing, um, so inside this function, we're loading the packages we'll need um, that will be run inside this kind of environment. Um, the Zell converter package provides the SCE to AND data function that does the conversion. So this is this is sort of confusing, but on the right hand side, we're supplying an R object. And once we apply this function, this A data is actually a Python object. You know, it looks we use the normal R syntax, so it looks like A data should be obviously an R object, but it is a Python object. Um, and then the next um, line. Is using um, syntax from actually called particulate, um, and we're actually invoking the write function from um, from standby, which is a Python package. So this is a Python function um, applied to a Python object. <laughs> kind of confusing, but all we're doing here is we're just writing this and data to to disk in a way that will load it from Python later. Um, and then once we're done with that, we don't need to return anything because all we wanted to do was write stuff to disk. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, and honestly, actually, if, you, if anyone has questions at this stage, like I'm happy to answer stuff about that because I feel like this section was kind of um, a little confusing. Um, and if not, we can continue. Uh, I don't think I see anything in the chat. So yeah, if we continue. Um, so yeah, now we'll use the data from spatial LIBD, um, just fetching it with this fetch data um, function. And then once we get that, we'll subset it to just one sample that we get small and easy to work with. Have it subset it to one sample. Um, take a quick peek at it. It's a spatial experiment. Um, and a lot of these, all of these sort of like slot, most of these slots are like shared with single cell experiment, which is all converted in a separate very, um, I think all of these. Um, and then some additional stuff are like spatial coordinates and the image data, which, um, so the first step we'll do is we'll actually move the spatial coordinates to um, this reduced dim slot, which self never knows how to convert. And actually um, some of the Python packages expect it in the um, 
sort of the spatial, what's it called? Um, you just have to name it spatial. Um, that's just a convention, I guess. Um, so we'll move it there so that we can convert it properly. For now, we'll ignore the image data because it's not, there's no straightforward way that I know of to convert that through Zell Converter. So we're just going to drop it and then re import it in Python. A little messy, but um, to be honest, I don't know of a cleaner solution yet. And I think it's sort of like an active field. These are sort of new types of objects. Like spatial experiments are fairly new, for example. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to actually invoke this function I wrote for the Zell Converter work. Um, actually, just going to write it. And that should be fairly quick. Um, yeah, and one of the messages it gives is like, okay, we're using the, the counts matrix in the object. Um, we're converting that to the dot x matrix, which is like the main matrix in it and data, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. So that's good. Um, yeah, so now we've done our stuff from R, we can actually quit out of R. Um, I'm going to, I'm not actually sure if you have to unload the module. I, this may, might be paranoid, but um, bear with me. Um, uh, next thing I'm going to do is like in practice at JHPCE, a lot of times, um, if we have like a Python software we're working with, I will make a, a module for it, which includes like a virtual environment with all the Python dependencies that we need. Um, so I actually have one of those modules that that's good for the type of stuff we'll be doing today in Python. Um, it will be the cell to location module. It's one of the Python tools um, that I work with. I'm going to load that so we have a, a version of Python with all the packages we'll need. So, and I'm going to run Python interactively. You should have this version if you do what I did. Um, but yeah, let's open the actual Python script that's provided in here. Uh, here. Um, yeah, so do some more re reorganization type stuff. We don't have too much space. Should have brought my mouse. I had to do the check. But anyways, yeah, for like demonstration, like obviously there's Jupyter notebooks, which I think are like probably a cleaner way to do interactive Python stuff. Um, but for like this demonstration, I think I'm gonna simply copy and paste into this terminal. It's probably not um, the typical thing you should do, or it can be kind of annoying to copy and paste. But. Yeah, we'll load, load these packages. Um, Scanpy is like the main one that works with Andatas. Um, Pi here actually is a Python port of the here package. So I, I find this pretty useful. We use this all the time for managing our paths. Um, um, the other ones, the other packages I'll explain probably later as we actually use them in the code. Um, it could take a while to load. Um, actually, these are probably straightforward to just talk about now since we're, we have this loading. Um, JSON package is for like importing JSON files. And in this case, our image metadata is a JSON. So that's why we import that. NumPy is like the main really popular Python package for handling like matrix like data or just arrays in general. Um, matplotlib is like the Python plotting. Um, Package, I don't like it too much to be honest. I think ggplot is much better, but uh, that's what people use in Python. Uh, so, yeah, we'll load some of these. Yeah, I guess the paths here are like paths to the image and the image metadata, and then the object that we just created on disk when we converted. Um, we're only using one sample. I'll get into why, what the spatial chords names is later in the script. Um, but first, we'll just load in that object that we wrote to disk. Um, and um, 
Um, yeah, this is really similar. Again, this is really similar to a summarized experiment since um, we have our observations, our um, variables, unstructured data, and so on. Um, but this has all, pretty much all the information except the image and the image metadata. So that's what we'll do here. Let's load the image metadata. Um, and I think if we had time, I would, I would it could be helpful to like go into, if, if, for people who aren't too familiar with Python, like just the syntax stuff we're using here. Um, I think we do actually, so like, um, this is sort of how you like open the, the uh, what's it called? The um, recommended way to open files in Python. Um, you used to have to like, um, actually like do file.open and file.close and stuff. But like now this, there's this like syntax called like with like ease with, um, and then you do everything that you need with your file inside the statement. It's like what you're supposed to do in Python. Um, Anyways, yeah, we have our um, image metadata here, which includes like for Visium experiments, you have like spots with a certain diameter. You have different images of different um, resolutions that are like down sampled from the original. Uh, I guess that's not too, basically it's just image metadata for what we're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, like ScanPy, SwoodPy, and I think other Python packages will expect this image metadata in a very specific place, which is this unstructured data slot and data, and specifically the spatial key. Um, so in terms of what we're doing here, this is actually a, it's called a dictionary in Python. We're just making a dictionary with one key um, for the one sample loop that we have, and um, we're calling it. It's actually a dictionary of dictionaries, but yeah, it's a little bit awkward, but this is how the Python factors expect it. Um, and maybe, I don't know, it might be helpful to just take a peek inside of here. Um, but maybe not actually. <laughs> Probably just as confusing as the statement. Um, okay, so we have our image metadata. Next, we want to load the image itself. So this is sort of like a this might look a bit awkward, but um, basically we have to have some um, library that can open PNG files, um, but we want the result to be a NumPy array. That's what this mp.array is. Um, so I typically, I actually use the PIL package for opening the image and then just directly converting it to a NumPy array, which is supported. Um, and in this case, our image data is a, um, it's, the RGB values are sort of saved the integers, which is pretty standard for images. But um, for these Python packages, I actually expect floating point values in between zero and one. So I changed the data type to um, float, which is, I guess, just numeric in, in R, um, and then scale down so that we have the right thing. Um, um, and yeah, we have a NumPy array. Um, Correct format. And again, this, this line here, there's lots going on, but it's, we're just following conventions that these packages use. This is where the stack just expects the image data. Um, and you're supposed to tell what resolution it is. So typically we work with high resolution images. And, uh, but this is sort of like a spatial trust cryptomics specific sub thing that's um, not important if you're trying to just percent cell converter and all that. Um, and uh, another sort of messy detail here is that even though in the R script, I mentioned that we like converted these spatial coordinates, um, it actually, by default, it actually makes it into a pandas data frame. And we want, it actually expects, the packages downstream expect numpy arrays. So what we do is we convert it and also we reorder the columns for the spatial coordinates. And that's simply because some versions of the spatial experiment put basically instead of X, Y, it's like Y, X, and we're, we're reordering here. Um, but yeah, that's just like a data formatting thing. Um, okay, so 
now I, I know there's like a lot that we had to do here, um, but we're actually done and we have an end data and the format needed for these um, downstream R packages. So we have um, our end data and like just to quickly test here, um, I, I like this function from ScanPy um, called just spatial and like, here you can plot one of the, um, if you have one of the columns corresponding to um, information about your samples in the object, for example, in this case, we have um, the object came with clustering information. So we actually cluster different spots on the Visium grid. Um, and so we'll, we'll show what that looks like over the high resolution image that we imported. Um, Hopefully my X11 is working today. And it looks good. Um, yeah, so like if you work with spatial data, I think it's like a really nice function here. Um, because you have like the histology image in the background, and then you have some um information that you like if someone did, did clustering, for example, then you can plot what that looks like over the um over the image. So um, now uh, there's one thing you might notice, and that's like the legend is like continuous when we're sort of actually plotting a categorical, categorical variable. And the reason I left it like this is like in theory you could have fixed this in the R object, but I think this is sort of like a in practice when you're programming like this kind of thing happens all the time where it's like you're like crap, oh, I forgot to format very like one of the variables correctly. So I think it's good to know how to like interactively deal with that kind of thing. Um, so actually, yeah, we can take a look at this cluster column um, and see what's the issue. Um, so we actually can see it's stored as a 32-bit integer, um, not a categorical variable, and that's why the plotting function just assumes that it was, should be plotted continuously. Um, so since this is actually, I didn't really get into what um, how the end data is structured, but like this, um, this like matrix of observations, which is um, essentially the call data in, in R. Um, this is a pandas data frame. It's a very typical Python uh, package for handling data frames. It's just like tabular data, I guess. Um, so in pandas, if you have like a, a, um, a series, which is just like a column, I guess, in, in the data frame. Um, to make it categorical, you just use S type category. Uh, so we'll just fix that real quick. Um, and now if we look at that, it is still actually an integer, um, but it knows it's a category, it's categorical variable with six categories. So, so yeah, I don't know, like this kind of thing is like good for like, Obviously, if we're exploring this figure interactively, it's not too important to have a legend perfect, but for papers and stuff, you obviously that's important. Um, so we just clean, clean that, that plot up and we should have a good legend now. Yeah, so now we have six discrete categories. Um, and there's obviously there's so much more you can do with now that we have a prepared AI data, but I was mostly just gonna focus on the conversion process. Um, we'll do one more thing and we'll look at one of the other columns. Um, so we actually, in this case, we have information about how many cells there are in each of these spatial spots. So, um, oh yeah, and by the way, there's a, you can supply a color palette. I think Beardus is like best, or it's one of the, my favorites. I've talked about colors before and why. I prefer some of the others. Um, We could really explore this kind of thing all day, but uh, yeah. Um, in this case, like the information we get here is useful in that. Like, typically, cell counts you want them to be fairly uniform, but a lot of times, due to the technical artifact, um, you'll have lots of the edge will be have like very high counts that are unexpected. Um, so I think that's what. 
So yeah, next that this case is just, just like maybe there's some technical issues going on here. But um, yeah, there's a lot. Again, there's a lot more you can do. I don't have all the time to like really do um, explore too much more. I just wanted to touch on it briefly. But we can um, let's go back to this. Uh, so aside from what we just did, I also wanted to mention like. Some related packages and alternatives. Um, so I touched a little bit on like what reticulate was, um, and Dalkenberger is sort of in practice. You probably want to use it with self later. Um, but basically, it's cool in that you can run Python code from in R section. So in this example here, it's like we just load the reticulate package, we use this import function, um, which is like. Um, back to you. It's like it would be just like running import OS in Python. It's the same thing. Um, so we're loading a library and then we're calling, invoking one of the uh, the uh, functions. So like this is how you would list files in Python. So I mean this is obviously this is a super simple code segment, but the key here is that we're loading a Python library and we're running Python functions. Um, in R. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, another thing is that since we were working with um, AND data, I recently just figured out that there's like an R port of the AND data function. So uh, I, one of the things that you might immediately want to do is like if you have a collaborator that works in Python and they're like, even if you're used to summarize experiments, they might have like H5 ID files for and data. And if you want to work with it still from R, you can load this package and like you have this function. And inside, when you have that load the and data, it looks just like you were in Python. So um, that's kind of like a cool option. Um, and I think there are other packages as well. I think Geo was going to go over one in the future R, um, R club, but. Um, yeah, that's actually mostly it. Um, I don't know if people have questions or hopefully, I don't know if I was checking the Zoom. I always get lost in the Zoom chat. Um, hopefully that's like, that wasn't dropping any questions. Yeah. Good morning. Um, yeah, like if there aren't any questions, we can also just finish up a bit early today. Um, yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for attending. Hopefully, uh, even though this is sort of like a niche use case, hopefully there's some useful information for, for you guys. Uh, some new tech.